So, congratulations. Actually, that's, that's the first thing I say to anybody who has come out of, of a controlling kind of religion. I, the first thing I say is congratulations. Sometimes they're surprised. But I have a lot of respect for you. I have a lot of respect for you. I, I am honored at, because I know that it took courage. I know that it took strength because these religions don't teach you self-reliance. They don't teach you to look to yourself, to have some intelligence, to respect your own feelings, your own intuition, and do what seems right to you. No, you, these religions teach you to hand over, hand over all of that all of that inner wisdom and all of that strength and all of, all of uh, your own thinking ability to outside authority, right? Over and over and over again. So learning to think for yourself and reclaim that is a major, major accomplishment. So welcome to the world. Welcome to the world. This is your home. We, we all live here. And actually, a lot of us are having a good time. Here and now, we're not waiting until the afterlife. Can religion be damaging? What do you think? OK. I want you to read this disturbing post. It's from a website from this Colorado killer that we've been telling you about. You're going to be startled by this. We were either at church, he writes, or being brainwashed in Christian homeschool. When we did have free time, we were either forced to pray, read the Bible, do chores, or, well, nothing, since we were not allowed to do anything. Well, I got all fed up with the insanity, hypocrisy, conflicting doctrines, the child abuse, brainwashing, the lies, the gossip, the scandals, the threats, and the fear-mongering. Me and many others are waking up. We will rise up above the and against these abuses against humanity. Now, this, this is a kid who's nuts. He's a crazed killer. His name is Matthew Murray. He wrote that. His resentment toward Christianity boiled over last Sunday when he uh, went on a shooting rampage and killed four innocent people at a youth mission and a church before finally turning the gun on himself, with a little help from a security guard, I should add. Now, as I talked to different people about this amazing story earlier this week, I was personally uh, stunned by the comments of one particular psychologist. Had never heard anybody say what she said. Uh, she reached out to Murray, interestingly enough, and she'd sympathized with his anger toward uh, religion. Marlene Winnell is uh, joining us again. By the way, she's written a book on this. It's called Leaving the Fold, a guide for former fundamentalists and others leaving their religion. All right, I was just having a conversation with Sean Caleb's, and the conversation I had with him was the fact that this guy seemed to have a real resentment against uh, e either Christianity or this particular church that he was attending. You actually responded to one of his postings, and you said to him the following after reading some of the crazy stuff that he had written and the anger that he had inside him. You wrote to him and you said, Miss w Dr. Winnell, I can see that you are in a great deal of pain and I'd like to invite you to contact me. Because you could obviously tell that this is a troubled person. Let me ask you this because, you know, in hindsight, this stuff looks so clear to us. But when you first read that posting where he goes on about, let me see if I can get it over here. He goes on and he says things like, I've never felt so final, someone find me please. This is what you had read that he wrote. Losing all reserve, I'm gone, I think I'm dying, crawling, crying all alone, cut me, show me, beat me, molest me. I mean, this, this is weird stuff. Did you think this guy was capable of doing something like this? Uh, no, I, I didn't, uh, certainly didn't expect him to become um, um, aggressive like that. And uh, I guess what I, what I would like to say here is that, and the reason why I reached out to him and said I can see you're in a lot of pain is because I have seen a lot of pain like that. This is a big area of what I call uh, some secret suffering in this country. There are a lot of people that are in a lot of pain because of what they've gone through with religion. Okay. So it's uh, actually uh, not uh, as uh, unusual. Uh, let, let me stop you there because that, that's interesting. That's what he seemed to be saying, that the religion had caused him this pain. Um... Are you saying that this is something we'll see more of with people as a result of being part of any Christian movement or any church might, might get this angry? Not necessarily kill, but be this angry? 
Well, it's already true. It's already true. It's uh, it's not any religion or any Christianity. It's this particular insidious kind of fundamentalist Christianity that is a crazy-making system. It has all sorts of circular reasoning. It's got bottom-line rules like don't think, don't respect your own feelings, you consider yourself bad and wrong in every way, uh, small children are told they're going to burn in hell, uh, and so and if it doesn't work for you, if you're not getting the peace and love and satisfaction and, and loving results within mm -hmm. the, the religion, it's your fault. It's because you're not doing it right. But you're not so saying, and, and, and before, before we, look, I, I, while I disagree with very much of what you said as a Christian, I certainly respect your right to say it, but you're not no, saying. No, I'm not talking about as a Christian. I'm talking about as a certain kind of Christian. This but, is you're, a very... but you're not saying that we can blame the, 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 the faith for this, right? I mean. I mean uh, doctor, I'm going to begin with you. Your assertion seems to be that part of this fundamentalist movement is hurting the people who go to these, to these churches, and in particular, children. Uh, take the next 40, 45 seconds to make your case. Well, I think that there are some teachings in certain kinds of, of Christianity that are extremely toxic, and they do cause mental health problems, and they cause... Like what? Uh, well, they cause people to have a real difficulty in thinking for themselves because you're really taught not to think. You're not allowed to think. You're not allowed to doubt. You're not allowed to ask questions. People that go to their pastors with just some simple questions get told that this is sinful. So they basically have to shut down. Some people even call it intellectual suicide in order to conform and be a part of this church. Are you, these let, but let's these be, churches let's, are all about fear let, and conformity. These churches are about fear and conformity. We get That's that. Right. Would you please tell us exactly which churches you're talking about? You're not, you're not talking about all Christianity, right? No, I'm talking about the, the, the um, literal Bible-believing fundamentalist-type churches and other authoritarian groups. And so the Charismatics, be, the Pentecostals, uh, those? Yes, and it's, uh, it can also be types of Mormonism or Jehovah Witness and other kinds of groups. It can be other religions yes. about what you're gonna, what's going to happen to you. We, we got that, but let's give Leonard Lovett a chance to respond to what he just heard you say. Have at it, Pastor. Well, I, um, first of all, I want to... Um, uh, my prayers go out to the victims and persons who have suffered this particular tragedy. Uh, my concern is when, when the author makes the uh, generalization about uh, uh, fundamentalist churches and then she classifies uh, Pentecostals with those groups. Um, I think it's a giant leap from the act of a, a person to... Um, okay, once. hey, Pastor, let's do this. I don't want to talk about this person, okay? This is not about this kid. This kid okay. was a nutcase, all right? He had completely gone bonkers, and I think we all understand that. The point she's making is that it's not him, that the church is doing that to many others who maybe don't act out this way, but nonetheless, they're being hurt. That's her point, and how do you respond? Well, I have a problem, because in, looking, in listening to this particular situation, it seems as though the young man was put out of the church and apparently came back Pastor, to Pastor, we're not talking about this young man. We're talking about, she's saying many people who go to these churches have this happen to them, that your particular brand of Christianity is hurting people rather than helping them. That's what she's saying. How do you respond? Well, uh, that's, that's a generalization. It's, it's, it's biased. Uh, to say that uh, a particular brand of religion, that, now, th I must agree that there are some groups that are toxic. The, the, what they teach is very toxic. Like who? Uh, uh, like well, who? I, I, I won't, I won't uh, specify specific names for, for reasons, but there are brands of religion that are toxic and authoritarian. But if you generalize and, and say Pentecostals across the board uh, are authoritarian, uh, I have a problem with that because you right, let, let, me give, let, me, let me give the doctor a chance to respond to you then. Uh, he seems to be saying too broad a, a brush. Uh, stroke, uh, could you be a little more, doctor, uh, definitive as to what you think the problem is, which churches, and what they're doing wrong? Well, I, I, don't, I don't know if that's really the angle here that would make the most sense. I think what we have here is a huge learning opportunity, and I think that it's a mistake. For example, uh, New Life is talking about this whole thing as an attack of Satan. Well, is this New is Life, let me, let me stop you real quick. Is New Life one of the churches that you're talking about? 
New Life holds to some of the toxic beliefs that I'm talking about. I have actually have a couple of clients that are from New Life. How widespread and is this problem that you seem to perceive in this country, do you believe? It's huge. We have tens of thousands of walking wounded in this country. It can be a continuum from mild to traumatic. Uh, it can be physical and sexual, mental, emotional. And the most ignored areas are mental and emotional which can cause lifelong problems. Abuse can be active harm or neglect and deprivation. So these are quotes either from mail I've received or clients that I've talked to. And, and the art that you see is um, from art therapy. I feel like much of my life was lived in fear. I am reading all I can to continue to find peace from what I've been taught. I still fear, fear and I'm 65. Unworthiness. <clears throat> I spent literally years injuring myself, cutting and burning my arms, taking overdoses and starving myself to punish myself so that God doesn't have to punish me. It's taken me years to feel deserving of anything good. I spent most of my life trying to please an angry God and feeling a complete failure. I didn't pray enough, read enough, love enough, etc. <clears throat> I had so many pent-up emotions and thoughts that were never acknowledged. Instead of protecting me from a horrible man, they forced me to deny my feelings and obey him, no matter what. It's no wonder I developed an eating disorder. So, uh, so, there, so there's sexual abuse, domestic violence, all these things that go on behind closed doors, right? Because of the, the patriarchy and the hierarchy and the absolute obedience that is supposed to go on within the religion and then the doctors and the authorities do a lot of covering up and have their own ways of uh, treating within the system and even their own economy okay and then family rupture of course my daughter has cut us off from all communication, she feels we are a threat to her marriage. Her husband is a pastor in an independent fundamentalist church. This has hurt all of us so much. It is the one thing I have fought so hard not to happen. It feels like I've lost my daughter. I spend many moments just bursting into tears. Okay, so <clears throat> the fact is that we all ha we have basic needs. We have physical needs. We have emotional needs. And we're just wired that way. And religion gives us a package deal, or it gives us these pseudo answers. And some of these answers are, are pretty nice. You know, you get a, an, a, a good intellectual explanation for why everything is, the meaning of life, what's going to happen after you die. You get your fire insurance, your life insurance for eternal life. That's pretty cool. Um, you get guidelines for how to live this life, moral guidelines. You don't have to think about what's right or wrong. You get a fairly simplistic system for living your life instead of all the complexity that most people live with. Um, you get some uh, serenity and beauty. I mean, wow. You Mormons have the Mormon Tabernacle Choir and, and these beautiful temples. And Catholics have cathedrals. I mean, there's a, a transcendence that's, that taps into some things that we need. But there are really parts of our brain that respond to these things. Um, and then you have your social needs met. I mean, we are social animals. We need each other. We need to belong. We need connection, right? And if you think in evolutionary terms, people that get isolated and alone, I mean, think about it in terms of the tribes that were wandering on the plains. If you got isolated and alone, you would die. Simple as that. So your craving to belong to a group is so deep and so hardwired you can't you can't fight that that's real 
So your terror for being rejected and cast out and, and being on your own is, is very deep. And then, of course, as a child, your need for your parents is primary. Humans do not survive within the first couple years without their parents. You're not like other animals where when you're born you can just get up, stretch, and walk off, you know, like some other mammals. You need like two years. You need, you're so dependent. So these, these basic needs are rather perfect, aren't they? For getting you to be extremely vulnerable to any sort of controlling religion. But the thing is that, that when they are all wrapped up in this package, a client of mine calls the religion the, the, a Walmart of uh, a, a place where you get all your needs met. And so when you leave, uh, it's rather shocking that you have to go into different places for different things. Anyway, um, you're not supposed to question any of the details. You're supposed to just buy the whole package.